Hi Booktube, um, this is Sina from Beating Around the Books and today I'm going to do a tag. Um, it's the B tag by Jim's Books Reading and Stuff um, and he's only gone and tagged me in this five months ago um, but um, I, as I've mentioned before several times I've completely dropped the ball on things I've been tagged in so I thought um, it's about time to get to this one. Um, so thank you, Jim, for tagging me and I apologize for the very, very slow turnaround time. Okay, so um, let's get into the prompts. One, B is for Bildungsroman. Do you have a favorite Bildungsroman or coming of age story? Um, funny enough, I didn't realize what Bildungsroman meant for the longest time. I don't quite know when I learned that it was basically a coming of age story because to me um, Bildung, I also think of education and then I always thought it was this sort of highfalutin sort of term um, and sort of associated it with very boring stuff I meant I was made to read in school. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, the first that came to mind that I really loved um, is uh, Paul Auster's Moon Palace. Um, this was also the first Paul Auster I read. I read it in the German translation first, um, just out of curiosity, uh, my free time. And then we were made to read this in English in class in like, I don't know, either the last year or the penultimate year um, in school. And this is actually still my school edition. It's like a, it's one that has like, it has like vocabulary help down here where they've like chosen whatever might need ex explanations um, for the young second language learner. Um, and I don't have a nicer edition of it, but I kind of like the fact that I still have this. I don't know. Um, I also wrote like my whole, um, how do you say this, like final exams were on this, uh, which suited me down to the ground. Um, and yeah, I think I wouldn't even be able to tell you much about this now, um, apart from very, very few sort of images that I still have in my mind that this conjures up. Um, but I really loved it and it made me fall in love with Paul Auster's writing. Um, but I do think this is more for a younger audience than some of his other work. So um, I guess I read it at the right time. Number two, B is for beach. Be careful how you pronounce it. What would you recommend for a beach read? So I've just been at a beach, haven't I, and read there. And uh, one of my recommendations is Mark Nash's Three Dreams in the Key of D. <laughs> this um, is, I don't know, it's like an ongoing joke. It's, this definitely does not classify uh, under beach read for your general uh, loose definition of whatever a beach read is. The thing is, I don't do beach reads. I, I, I read whatever strikes my fancy and that's normally not what you would normally find in the beach read section. And this one is now officially a beach read because I read it there. And also um, I found it quite funny that Roz found this, I think last year, in her library in the summer read section. So I don't quite know who was doing the sorting there, or if they somehow mistook this for something else. But um, yeah, anyway, you can read this at the beach, I did. And another one I read that maybe fits it slightly better, even though also not really, but for me it works, is the other book that I also read largely at the beach, um, Matthias Inaus, Tell Them of Battles, Kings and Elephants. Um, again, not because this is your classic Beach read, but it is very dreamy um, and sort of propels you along very quickly, even though, you know, it's not like there's like a super um, intense plot or anything like that. It's just the language propels you along. And then the fact that the chapters are very short, it's just, um, yeah, to me, it was compulsively readable, even though it doesn't fit any of these sort of typical um, categories that would make something compulsively readable, if that makes any sense. 
I can certainly recommend it. The language was just beautiful and it left me with a proper hangover, a book hangover um, in the sense that I was still on holiday and I was just like, I don't know what to pick up after this. I've read this and I want to read more like this or like the other book I'm going to mention. Um, but I don't think any of these things fit the bill, you know, and whatever. So that's my cho choice for Beach Read. Then we have B is for Beagle, which is not a prompt, but a chance to see Jim's Beagle Abbey. I do not have a Beagle, but I do have a Bandit, uh, which is one of my cats. The rambunctious one who usually messes around with this camera here. Um, and of course now he's nowhere to be seen. So I think um, if I find a nice clip of him, I will insert one now. <laughs> Oh, it is stop. Right, um, I hope this was not too much gratuitous cat footage. I think it's probably fine. No? Well, um, number three, B is for best. What is the best book you've read this year so far? Uh, it's like, a, I'm just repeating myself over and over again, aren't I? Um, it's Nervous System by Lina Meruan. I've just recently uh, made a rather rambly attempt at a review of this so I'm gonna link that down below if you are interested. Um, I read this in August and so far when this kind of beat Hamnet from its uh, top position um, and so far I haven't read anything else that was better I think um, and I don't expect to but I'd be happy to be surprised of course. Okay, then we have number four. B is for bookshop or bookstore. Do you have a favorite bookstore? Um, sadly, no. Uh, simply for the fact that where I live, there's very, very few like independent bookshops anymore. Um, you know, they're struggling everywhere, obviously. And the ones that do still exist I mean, I try and support them when I buy my German books there and stuff like that, but they're nothing like really special in that sense. The only reason I want to give them my money as opposed to some company, um, you know, the big A, um, is because I want them to, con to continue to exist. But they're not like anything special. Um, I guess I could say my old employer but they've been closed for going on I don't know 12 years or something like that because <laughs> uh, they were also bought out by a big chain um, yeah I don't know I've, I've been to a few really really lovely charming second-hand bookshops there's one in um, Lincoln was it Lincoln in the UK um, that I thought was brilliant because it was one of those you know everything smells really of, you know old old and dusty books and everything is stacked up to the ceiling every corner there's still more and more and more which um, can feel quite magical in itself to be in a shop like this but on the other hand I don't think it would be my go-to bookshop to go to you know what I mean because uh, I think I wouldn't have the patience all the time um, yeah I wish I lived in a city that had better bookshops. Let's put it that way. Okay, five. B is for banned books. Is there any book you think should be banned? This is interesting. Um, so, you know, we're all for free speech. And I agree with that to an extent. But what is very interesting is because this has been a debate 
I think since last year um, about, well, you know, Hitler's Mein Kampf, my struggle, which has been banned in Germany for the longest time, but then the copyright ran out and um, so then there was this whole debate about what to do about the copyright running out because then, I don't know, apparently there's some, I don't know, <laughs> legally it's more difficult to ban or I can't remember, you know, because people can just reprint it anyway. Now the thing is, of course, you can get your hands on this book either way because in other countries it's not forbidden. Um, but here they then decided to publish a version of this which which has critical material um, annotations and also essays um, you know that comment on it and to then basically make this the only legally allowed version of this book um, within Germany now like I said of course illegally you can get it whatever you want you know um, and I think I guess that is probably not the worst way to go about it. Um, I'm not saying I would ever actually pick that up. I'm not interested in reading that. But I do think at least, you know, if it comes with this sort of critical commentary, you know, it can be used in history lessons uh, and stuff like that. So I don't know. Is this a tangent? Probably isn't. Yeah, it probably is. I don't know if there should be a ban. I mean, I guess, you know, if it's hate speech, but then, well, where are the lines, you know? Like, you can have a politically abhorrent position and might still very much should be allowed to write about it anyway. I don't know. I mean, there are some lines clearly, right? Because we've just recently only had this video that was made about that youth who had lots of like right-wing extremist writing and he was well he was in court for it so clearly there are some lines that can be crossed where at that point then something gets banned but well I'm not too familiar with those things sorry I'm gonna stop <laughs> uh, stop rambling on this tangent um, anyway Question number six. B is for Bible. What is your favorite book of the Bible and what trigger warnings do you think it should have? I have none. Um, I never read the Bible. Uh, I've read individual little snippets of it and some in one way or another in religious education or in those classes I had to go to in church for confirmation. But I never read the whole thing and I also don't intend to, I think. I'm not, not fussed about the Bible. Um, but I mean, I'm sure trigger warnings abound, generally speaking. Number seven, B is for bookshelf. Show me your bookshelf bookshelves. Well, you can see it behind me there. Um, and I think I'm not going to, like, make redundant content because I made a bookshelf tag and I think it was the second video I made so you can see me being very very awkward even more awkward than now and I'm going to link to that because that's when I uh, show the bookshelf more in depth. Um, nothing really has changed apart from having added another small shelf and having made more room in the hallway on a shelf that used to hold other things. <laughs> um, okay, and then number eight, B is for Brazil. Paulo Coelho's, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Paulo Coelho's, the alchemist, has been translated into 70 languages. Have you read any of his work? <laughs> and if so, did what did you think of his books? I read The Alchemist um, because obviously you know, this is the kind of book that everybody talks about, how you must read this. Um, and I read it um, and thought it was drivel. Um, this was before I kind of, I guess, before I was like, you know, 
more discerning as a reader, uh, which is probably why I didn't dismiss it outright and actually read it um, after hearing about it so much. Um, but after reading it, I thought, wow, what a waste of time. This was complete, like, I don't know, sentimental drivel. Um, not that I have a lot of memories of it. I just remember this uh, reaction to it. And then, um, yeah, I've since just come to the conclusion that this is the type of book that people recommend to you who don't tend to read a lot of books. Um, you know, it's the type of thing that you'll find on inspirationalquotes.com in front of some sort of sunset background. I don't know. Um, I have not felt uh, inclined to read any of his other work. But, you know, good on him. I guess he made a lot of money with this. Um, yeah, this is the end of the tag. And I'm supposed to tag people. And I have no clue how to do this because the bloody tag is five months old. Um, so I'm going to, however, tag one person even though i've only just recently tagged him but i'm just gonna try and nudge him so he can so he'll make one finally and that is brandon's bookshelf first of all your name starts with a b and second of all just you know take part in tagging please that would be too cool and yeah you should all go and check him out um he does in-depth reviews and also short versions of reviews um they are very well structured and uh, much more you know sort of cohesive and well thought out than what I uh, deliver here um, and so I think you could definitely benefit, benefit from him and I did mention this last time as well um, he also has reviewed several non-fiction books so if you need any more um, sort of inspiration for non-fiction November you can go and check him out right um, so I'm just going to leave it at one tag because, like I said, it's been around for ages and um, <sighs> hope to speak to you soon. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.